In this example, we're going to have a system with three subsystems with a state machine. The idea is that the system is going to change state and each of the subsystems is going to have different power draws per state that it's in. And we want to roll up the power draws at each state. So to do that, we're going to start with a state machine diagram at the system level. And then we're going to add some more refinement to break it down to the subsystem levels where we'll have several different activity diagrams. Then to roll up or add the power from the subsystem levels to the system level, we've got three different ways to do that. We've got an activity diagram method, a parametric diagram method, and a roll up pattern method. So with that, we'll get started. So you just saw me create the system level state machine diagram. We made sure that the state machine behavioral diagram is the classifying behavior to the system structural block. And then we added signals to the transitions to make them triggers so that we can go from state to state. We then create this hardware block and we create generalization relationships from all of our blocks to the hardware block. And that will allow all the subsystem and system level blocks to inherit the value property power. So we're doing some package structure cleanup here. And then we're showing the inherited values, the power inherited values. You can see the up caret, which means inherited. So we're starting very simple here by adding opaque actions to the entry behaviors of several different states. This will allow us to change the power value property of the system block when we run simulation. So we must realize that uh, this is only changing the power at the system level. We have not added the subsystem level powers yet. We'll run this in simulation and show that power as we change states actually does appropriately update from 0.15 to 25 to 79. Now we're showing a different way to do this. Instead of adding the opaque action to the entry of each of our states, we can also add it as an effect to the transition. Uh, this is slightly different, but comes out with the same outcome. So now that I've added the effect to the transition, I'm going to go ahead and remove the opaque behavior from the entry of each of the states and you'll see the simulation works appropriately. So let's imagine that we have an Excel file that has all the subsystem level power pulls per state. Now we'll import that and then start adding that to our model. We're going to have a subsystem A activity, which is going to be a classifying behavior to our subsystem A block. We're going to fill that out later. We're going to create an instance table. We're then going to create a block, which is going to have all the columns as value properties within it. We're going to drag that block as the classifier of the instance table we just created. I'm typing each of the value properties, which are columns, as type real for a real value, and then I'm dragging the power block that I just created onto the instance table. You'll see the instance table header is going to match the Excel table headers, and then we're going to add the stereotype diagram table map to data source to the instance table. You can use these two sources as additional help for the Excel helper APIs. We will add the links to the description below. We are using an opaque action and then writing in a, the Excel helper function, which will allow us to pull the information from the Excel table. We need to create a reference property between subsystem A and the power block. This will allow us to import the Excel. We can see when we run the system block in simulation that the data is not properly imported, so we're going to troubleshoot that error. We first recognize that the state value property under the power block should not be of type real, it should be of type string, so we'll update that. So we'll go back and rerun the simulation and recognize that it still doesn't work as anticipated. We then recognize that our opaque action has Excel data equals and then the line of code. We need the Excel data to be the name of our reference property. Now rerunning simulation, we do see that the reference property values have been added from the Excel. We can match up the Excel and the simulation and see that they are one and the same. We'll add our second opaque action to this activity. This second opaque action is going to set the power value property of the subsystem A value property to a value from the imported Excel data. 
note we added the time event just so that the activity doesn't complete without us being able to troubleshoot. We should remove this at the very end. We had a few syntax errors upon running simulation. We need to add that Excel data .get zero, which is going to give us the first row of the data. And we need to add little quotation marks around subsystem A power, which is going to give us the column which is desired. The reference properties subsystem A power of 0.5 is now pulled up to the power of subsystem A value property. Now we're going to add several more opaque actions. These are going to be very similar to the second opaque action which we created. We will make some minor modifications to then uh, add the correct new row to pull from for initialize and operate. We added the two accept event actions, two init and two operational. What this means is when it receives that signal, it's going to take that path and move to the next opaque action. Get of one means that it's going to take the second row up from the Excel table, which is going to be our initialized values. And get two is going to be the third row of the Excel table, which is going to have our operational power values. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scale. We're going to copy the activity which we just created and then we're going to paste it into subsystem B and we're going to change some of the details to make it specific for subsystem B. Note it didn't work on the first go round because we hadn't added that reference property from subsystem B to the power block. So we'll add that. I went ahead and added the reference property between subsystem C and the power block because the next step is going to be scaling out uh, subsystem C as well. Um, I'm then going back to subsystem B and running that in simulation and making sure that there's no issues or errors. I'm now scaling to subsystem C and doing the same copy paste and edit as before. Note that it is mandatory that you have the activity that you've created as the classifying behavior of the block. When we run the system block in simulation, it will then run the system behavior state machine as well as the subsystem A, subsystem B, and subsystem C classifying behaviors all in parallel. We then select the system block within the simulation sessions window and then we select to init. This is going to send the trigger to init to the state machine which is going to change from the off state to the initialized state. This is then going to change the power value from 0.15 to 13.5. Then we select the subsystem C part property within the variables tab, and then we select to operational. It will then send the signal to just the subsystem C, which will then update the power within subsystem C only. It does not roll up at this time. We're doing some cleanup tasks here, and we are adding the activity diagrams all shown at the same time within the BDD. So when we run simulation, we can see everything all at once. We're having some weird bug issues within Cameo when we run the system level block. We're noticing that it's only running subsystem A and subsystem C, for example, and not running subsystem B at certain times when we run it. And then uh, we'll rerun simulation again, and it will only run certain other subsystems. It should, if it's, there's no bug, it should run subsystem A, B, and C, as well as the system behavior state machine all at the same time. The first idea was to change Excel data to Excel data A, Excel data B, Excel data C, uh, separating them so that uh, maybe there's not an issue with them not recognizing them individually. We'll see the solution to this troubleshooting issue bug later in this video. Now we're going to add another level of refinement, the subsystem level. To do that, we're going to go ahead and remove the opaque behaviors from the state machine diagram, and we're going to replace some of these behaviors with activities as entry criteria to the off initialize and operational states. These activities at the system level are going to send signals from the system level down to the subsystem level dictating what state the subsystem level is going to be in. The subsystem level will then receive that signal and uh, change the power output accordingly. Note, in order to properly send the signal from the system level to the subsystem level, we must create an internal block diagram and a port in which that signal is going to be transmitted over. We then must go back to our activity diagram within the send signal action and specify which port that signal is going to go over. 
When we run this in simulation, we can recognize when we send the initialize command within the internal block diagram, you can see the signal to initialize being transmitted from the system level proxy port to each of the subsystems, A, B, and C. We see that the power value within subsystem A and within subsystem B and within subsystem C is correct. The power value at the system level is not there. When the two operational signal is sent, the subsystems also update as intended. The system level is still blank. This needs to be completed next. There are three ways to add the system level power, the parametric method, the activity method, and the rollup method. We'll explain the parametric first. So we'll create a parametric diagram at the system level. We'll then come back to the BDD and create a constraint block and call it sum and then add our equation. Our equation is total equals the sum of the children, where the children have a multiplicity of many. The children are going to be subsystem A, subsystem B, subsystem C, the power values. We will now connect the constraint parameters to their value properties. Having added the parametric diagram, we will go back to the system block and run it in simulation and troubleshoot. You'll also notice that when we run the simulation, sometimes there's an issue as before where it doesn't automatically run subsystem A, subsystem B, and subsystem C activities. We will address this further going forward. And we recognize that the sum is not working as we intend. It is adding another value to the array each time there is a value property that's been updated instead of overriding the previous value property. So we need to make sure that our array is only three in length instead of this nine in length that you see here. To troubleshoot the array size, we're going to go into our constraint and change it to total equals subsystem A plus subsystem B plus subsystem C, and then connect them up individually. We're going to go ahead and add some time events before the opaque actions begin for subsystems A, B, and C, just so that they don't start exactly at the same time, and maybe this will help our bug. We'll now go ahead and run the system block in simulation, and we realize that the activities A, B, and C did run as intended, so our time event does seem to have worked. The, the bug has, is now gone. Um, additionally, we see that our new parametric diagram is correct and the array is only of length 3. Rolling up the power value at the system level did work using the parametric diagram. Now we'll go ahead and delete that and show the second alternative, which is adding a behavior to the system level state machine. In this method, we're going to import the total power column of our Excel table and then use that as the value property power at the system level. To import the Excel data, we're going to first add the reference property, as we did with the other subsystems, and then add the opaque actions, as we did with the other subsystems. You'll see us copy the opaque action text from subsystem C and paste it into the start off activity within the higher level system activity. This will first import all the data from Excel in the first opaque action, and then the second opaque action will be placing the imported data, the correct imported data, into that power value of the system level value property. We'll then add a, another opaque action to the start init activity and the start operate activity, which will also then just change that power value of the value property of the system block to the appropriate power value. You'll see within the start and knit activity that we change the zero to a one. This is allowing it to pull a different row of data and put that into the power value at the system level. We will change the zero to a two within the start operate activity and this will pull the third row of data from the Excel table. We'll go back and run the system block in simulation and show that the value property power underneath system is rolling up appropriately, which it is. And we can change the state from off to initialize to operational and it will pull the values and put them in that power value property. Note that this method does not have Cameo doing any of the addition. The Excel table, that last column of the Excel table is doing the math, doing the addition to add the subsystems 
power together, and Cameo is just taking the cell value and putting it into the power value property. Now we'll show the final alternative to add the system level power value property. This is the rollup pattern. To prepare to add the rollup pattern, we're going to go back and remove the opaque actions which we added in the previous example. After removing the opaque action, if we were to run simulation, the power value property of the system level would just remain blank. So we'll go ahead and pull our hardware block up and we're actually going to delete it from the model and that will remove all of the power value properties from subsystems A, B, and C and the system level. We'll then right click the system block and apply the power rollup pattern. We can now run the system block in simulation and see that it does roll up accordingly. This is because the power rollup uses the exact same lettering of power that is uncapitalized. Um, so it does work with the opaque actions that we've created previously. Within the simulation variables tab, you can go down to the bottom and see the constraint sum colon total, which is going to show that power rollup. You can think of this as very similar to the parametric diagram example, except for a little bit more fancy and a little bit more under the hood. So that's all we had to show today. Uh, there is more refinement, which is likely required in this model. Um, that would make it more clear and more representative of the actual system. We hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comments and questions below.